So you want to do an outdoor art festival, but you're not quite sure how. I'm going to share with you my story and how I made a couple thousand dollars, even though the worst thing happened. So I'm going to cover the three phases of setting up for a three day outdoor art festival. One is planning, two is set up and tear down, three is, well, if you stay till the end, I'm going to teach you how you can make some money from these events. Before you begin, make sure you have enough inventory of art. Make sure that you have a lot of originals. It can't just be prints most of the time. And uh, I had to make more art. Make sure you can spare at least $500, depending on what you already have and what you're gonna need to buy, which we're gonna cover. And if you're making art that needs to be framed, it can get a little pricey. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can save some money on that. Phase number one is planning. Make a list of everything you need to get done. Make a list of everything you're gonna need to bring. For a full list that's already done for you, check the description below. You're gonna need things like a cell charger, a square reader, cash for change, snacks, extension cords, trash bags, business cards, and so much more. So just check the description for the full list. Then plan on a schedule of when you're gonna get everything done and make sure that you have enough time before the actual art event. For me, it took a couple of weeks, um, maybe even a couple of months to get everything ready. One tip to how you're going to hang your art in your tent before you actually get there is planning it out in Canva. So you can see I put the black and white art on the inside of the tent and the colorful art on the outside of the tent. You'll want to create inventory lists, create price tags, have everything ready to go before the actual event. So like I said, framing can get pretty pricey, but one tip is to go to Goodwill, thrift stores, go to garage sales. Um, the art might be terrible, but the frames might be great. So check the frame to make sure it's of good quality. Uh, bonus points if it already has wiring on the back. I wanted all my frames to match, so I spray painted them black. You can get sandbags from Amazon to weigh down your tent. I thought this was overkill at first, but I was really glad that I had it when I did. You can get the sand from the garden section of your local hardware store. During the planning phase though, you want to be taking photos and sharing it to social media because you're going to build hype and buzz and get people excited to come to your event and know how hard you're working. Um, so just keep sharing as you're going and you can even send personalized video messages to invite your friends, family, uh, and most importantly, your past art clients. So if someone has already bought from you before, they're more likely to buy from you again. If you can send them a video message through Facebook or even if you have their phone number, text the message. Um, and just send one that looks like this. Hey Curtis, so I just wanted to personally invite you to the Maitland Art Festival, which I know you know, but I'm gonna be at it. It is eight days away. Hi Patty and Ross, I just wanted to send a personalized invite. Uh, I wanna thank you guys so much for all of your support and the, the role you play in my life. So the planning phase is done once you have all of your art created, framed, inventoried, photographed, um, you have a plan for how you're going to set up your entire booth and you have everything in, you know, big bins, like you have your extension cords, and your lighting and your business cards, all in big Tupperware bins, ready to go for the day of. Next, we're going to start planning the setup and teardown. Once I knew where my actual booth was going to be, I went and checked it out to see what the actual ground was going to look like. What am I looking at? Which way am I facing the tent? And I decided that based on what the flow of traffic was going to be based on that specific location. So I hired friends to help. I rented a U-Haul van because my art was just so big. It wasn't even going to fit in my car, which was totally worth it. Extra tip would be to plan plenty of time for wrapping and unwrapping your art. You want to make sure it's nice and safe, but it takes a long time. I decided to use every wall I could, not just the inside, but the outside. And then I had a protective flap that came down to make sure that the rain wasn't going to get on my arm. I also brought curtains to hide the corners of the tent and make it look nicer. So I did weeks of planning and framing and praying for good weather. And the day finally came and the worst possible thing happened. Just as I was finishing setting up the tent, the rain clouds rolled in. As I laid in bed that night, I heard the storm outside the window just thundering and raining and pouring and I just worried that my art was going to be completely ruined and I was just like, Ey! but I had done everything I could to possibly protect it. So if you take nothing else from this, just protect everything. So like I said, the art was too big to be able to put back into a car or into the van because then I wouldn't be able to rehang it by myself in the morning and it took forever to hang it. So what I did was I covered everything with plastic bags. I even covered the ground with plastic. The reason I did this is because as it rains, it's going to seep into the ground. And when your tent is all zipped up, the water from the ground is going to slowly steam up out of the ground and then it'll make the entire tent moist. So I wanted to have the entire area sealed as much as possible. So some things that you can get for this are like large contractor, contractor bags, contractor, large contractor bags, mattress covers, 
shower curtains from the dollar store. Anything that's plastic is gonna be worth it in the long run to protect your art. Also, I didn't know that my tent had holes in the ceiling. So when it started raining, I started seeing little drips and I was running around putting tape on the top of the ceiling. Now, if I had to do it over again, I would have, before the tent is up, I would have taped from the top down instead of inside the uh, tent so that the, the rain wasn't going to eventually knock the tape off, so, which is what happened. And then I had rain on my art, but I had it protected with plastic. So morning came and I was so nervous and I went to unzip my tent and check and see, had anything survived? Was it all ruined? And I pull back the two curtains and I look and it had survived. Everything was fine. I was very happy that I had protected everything like crazy, even though everybody said that, oh, it's fine, it'll be fine, you have a tent. No, go crazy with the plastic, protect your art. So yay, everything survived and now it's time to do the show which if you've ever done one of these shows, you realize that it takes a lot of energy. So you're gonna to wanna to do as much energy management as possible. Make sure you get a good night's sleep before. Um, make sure that you have someone there to watch over your booth so you can run and use the bathroom and go get food and anything else that might come up because otherwise you're gonna feel totally uncomfortable leaving your booth unmanned, but you're not gonna be able to take care of your needs. Make sure you bring snacks, plenty of bottled waters, sweaters if it might get cold, anything that might possibly happen, just prepare for it all. So some people ask me, how much did it cost? Well, let's see, let me look at my list here. 325 for the booth, $60 for the application, $100 for Lowe's uh, lights and cords, $30 at Ross to get a small table and chair, $10 at Staples for printing, um, $46 for one of my prints, 84 for another one, 160 it adds up. So you see, I mean, there's just a lot of, of cost that can go into it depending on how much work do you already have created, how much is already framed, what supplies you have, are you borrowing a tent from a friend or are you buying one new? Um, it can add up pretty quickly. It can cost around $500, it can cost around a thousand, it could be even more. It just depends on how fancy a setup you wanna go with and how much stuff you already have, what you can borrow from a friend, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that you are at least breaking even. So this is the biggest fear of artists. Am I gonna put in all this work, all this effort, all this money and not even make money? So that takes us to how do you actually make money at one of these events? I will tell you. So the secret that most people don't talk about is you don't always make the money at the event. A lot of times it comes after. So even though it rained, not many people came, both because of the rain and because there was another art festival going on, I think the next weekend, I didn't have a lot of sales at the event. A few prints here and there, but I left thinking, man, that was a disaster. I put so much money in, I risked all my art, I didn't make that many sales, I used all this energy, and what do I have to show for it? Well, I was wrong, because as the time went on, people had picked up my cards, they had written down their emails for a win a free print contest. They contacted me through Instagram, my email, my website, and they wanted commissions, they wanted prints, they wanted originals they had seen. Uh, so a lot of the art that I sold was actually not at the event, but after the event, but because of the event. So if you didn't sell out, it's not a failure. There's still a lot of sales we made after the event. Make sure that you have cards on hand, on the table, so if you leave the booth, that their cards are still there, even if you're not there. Make sure that you have that list for them to sign up and put their email and their name and give someone that free print because it is worth it. It is worth that cost going towards the marketing and advertising that later you're going to follow up with emails and send them to your website, your Instagram, uh, tell them about a sale you're having, tell them how great the event was, or even if it wasn't that great, they don't need to know that. The thing is you need to follow up with them and keep in contact. So it is not just about the one, two, three days that you're there. It's about the long game. Oh, in this video, it'll show you a little bit more about the gear I use for setting up for a one day art festival. So if you have any questions, put them below in the comments. I would love to hear what happens to you on your first art festival, or maybe you've been at it for a while and you have some tips that you'd like to share with other artists. Either way, put them down below. Thanks for watching guys, and uh, I'll see you soon. Like and subscribe if you liked it.